What do you expect from Paramount Plus? It's kind of a rebrand of CBS All Access. Can it compete? And does it have anything like uh, Disney Plus's Mandalorian? It's a great question, Frank. Look, they don't have any sort of scripted series that's like Mandalorian, but what they do have is live sports, and that's going to be the key differentiator between Paramount Plus and some of its competitors, as you mentioned, Disney Plus, but also Peacock and Netflix, Amazon Prime Studios, etc. Of course, the crown jewel is the NFL on CBS. But in terms of fun dramas, new series that you might want to get hooked at, look to a lot of reboots. They're going to have a new refreshed version of Frasier with Kelsey Grammer, as well as refreshed kid shows like our new Rugrats update, as well as iCarly. So, Sarah, I mean, Paramount Plus is going to offer live football. We're just talking about what Amazon is potentially going to pay to secure live football. So, as you mentioned, it's the crown jewel. Also, some other iconic program, whether programming, whether you like it or not, Jersey Shore, that's pretty iconic. They're going to have that on there. Um, you also mentioned some Nickelodeon programming. So who's the target audience of this streaming service, and can they realistically take market share from a Disney Plus and from a Netflix? Yeah, great question. I think the target audience is families. You have something for everyone here. Your movie buffs are going to have over 3,000 new movies. They're going to have some new hits like Mission Impossible 2 coming to the series just after they launch in theaters, 45 days. You're going to have kids programming. As you mentioned, there's a new SpongeBob movie that's coming out exclusively to the platform. And then for sports lovers, there's going to be live sports. And it's not just the NFL, Frank. They have secured rights to new soccer tournaments in Europe. So so there's going to be something for everyone. What this lacks, in my opinion, is mature programming. You have services like Hulu that have exclusive FX progr programming, shows like Breaking Bad, shows like Bob's Burgers. You have a lot of that going on. There's not going to be as much of that here, although to your point, there's going to be a lot of really strong reality. As a Jersey girl, I'm excited for the Jersey Shore, as well as all of MTV's other reality hits, Survivor, Big Brother, and so much more. Well, you know, you can take your phone when you gym tan, tan and laundry, and you can watch Jersey Shore. Uh, on a serious note, I think a lot of people are scratching their heads about some of the programming. So you mentioned they're bringing Frasier onto this platform, but that used to be an NBC show. They won't have Yellowstone, one of their critically acclaimed shows. They already sold that to Peacock. And they won't have the Chappelle show because he said he doesn't want his content on there. So what things do they have coming up? Do they have any other premium things like those three things coming up on the horizon that might draw viewers in. Yeah, that's a huge challenge, not just, by the way, for Viacom CBS, but for a lot of streamers that they wanted to pay down debt or to raise a little money. They sold off some of their prime inventory to other streamers, so they're not going to get some of that Yellowstone content on their service soon, although they are planning some new reboots of Yellowstone, some spinoffs. I think some of the other crown jewels are things that you're going to expect that are going to really lure people in are the temple programming from CBS and from Viacom that have developed major fan bases around the world. We're talking new Star Trek series. That's going to be a huge game changer for a lot of folks. As I mentioned earlier, Big Brother fans, they're going to have every season on there exclusively. So that's going to be the star programming on the show. The other thing that they've got, remember, Avatar is a Paramount Pictures program. And so because of that, they're planning a bunch of new Avatar series, both uh, for kids and for adults. That's going to be another big hit. But to your point, Frank, this is a really competitive streaming landscape. It's not going to be easy for them to take market share from Netflix, which has over 200 million subscribers worldwide, or from Disney Plus, which at this point has around roughly 100 million subscribers. They're going to have to be very competitive, hold on to those NFL rights, and continue to put out new great streaming series and films to make sure people subscribe and stay with them. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.